25 years ago, the laser was invented and immediately offered the possibility of sending very large quantities of information along a laser beam. But you can't point it at a receiver because it might come onto rain and the beam gets deflected or a bird might fly through it. So <coughs> people decided to send it down a fibre of glass. Here's a piece of ordinary, quite good plate glass and it looks very transparent until we try and look through it sideways and have not a quarter of an inch but say four inches. If we do that, it then looks very green because the glass <laughs> absorbs quite a lot of light, actually. This one is transmitting only the green light. Now imagine that this block of glass, instead of being four inches, was several miles long. We would have to choose the optical properties of the glass very carefully and the colour of the light that we're sending so that we got the maximum signal out the far end. Here we have some rather thick glass fibres in black sheaths and we show that light can be bounced along a thin uh, <coughs> filament uh, and will come out the other end even if the fibres are bent. Let me offer that up to the lamp now. You can see the light coming out the far end. If I put my thumb over the near end, they go out and I could send messages in that sort of a way. The modern fibres that are now used can transmit very long distances. Down here is a laser, and its light is focused by a high-power lens at this point here into the end of a fibre that you might just be able to see glinting here. And that comes up through the shelf, takes a lot of turns around the drum, looped out here, and is then the cut end faces a little um, screen over there by which the light comes out. Now, before the light goes into that cable, we, that fibre, we have a chopper disc that will interrupt it. I'll switch on the chopper motor and vary the speed. You should be able to see the light flashing on the screen and it's actually sending a message in Morse code. Can anybody tell me what the message is? SOS. SOS, that's right. <coughs> I think those are the three best known letters two letters, if you like, in the Morse code. Now, if we speed up the disk, we actually make it faster and faster. You couldn't read that as Morse, but the message is still coming through. And one could easily build a detector that would read it at that speed and write it out so that we could just turn it up to the maximum speed until it's just a flickering light. But those rates are quite trivial compared with the rates that a glass fibre can transmit. The bandwidth, the range of frequencies that a fibre can transmit is truly phenomenal, which is its other major advantage. TAT-8, the submarine cable, and telephone truck cables now being installed around this country are designed to handle 565 million pulses of light per second. That is comfortably enough to describe all the information needed to print a complete copy of the Bible. <coughs> At the British Telecom Research Laboratories recently, I saw a demonstration of 2,000 million bits or pulses per second going down an uninterrupted fibre that was 90 kilometres long. That's enough to send the Bible four times in one second. So gradually now, with increasing speed, this country is being rewired, not with telephone wires, but with glass <coughs> fibres. That may sound like a huge operation. It means digging up all the roads and stripping the wires out of buildings. But in fact, it's easier than it might seem. It's easy to pull the wires out, of course, but how do you get the glass <coughs> fibres in? Well, again, British Telecom have invented a very smart way of doing this, and they've arranged that we can demonstrate it here today. Here we have a plastic tube which can represent a telephone conduit. It comes from the loading machine here and comes along here, up the stairs, 
In fact, a number of you will find it close to your seats. Can you now hold it up so that we can see the entire length? It's a couple of hundred feet here. You see there are coils at various points along it. It goes right up along there, down and back here to the other end, which Mr. Bill Coates is holding. Now, I'm going to thread a system of seven light fibers through that in a couple of minutes. And I'll show you how it's done. <coughs> it's fed into the machine here from the drum, which rotates freely. And we blow it through with compressed air. Would you like to put the air on, Bill? We've also got a little green lamp at the end so that you can see where the end is. And some of you may see the lamp just down here now. And as the green lamp comes round to you, will you shout out here in a good loud voice so that we know exactly how far it's got? OK? Here we go. It's beginning to go. somewhere, you know. Does it actually stop, Bill? <laughs> that, I think you'll agree, is a very smart way of threading light fibres down. Um, the tubes that will protect them and hold them within our buildings. 